family, I'll just have a first couple words. This is our moment, okay? Uh, it's a turning point for us, for our country. And this moment, it's not coming back, okay? So we embrace it. Uh, in our lifetime, we don't know if it's gonna come back, okay? So we have a whole country waiting for this. You know, we put ourselves in this position, so now we just embrace it. And tomorrow we leave the stadium on top of the group. Brothers on three. One, two, three! Brothers! Stay tight, stay tight. When you look at that World Cup, I don't know what it says to you, what it speaks to you, but it tells me the biggest event on the planet. This is Mexico City, notoriously the hardest city to win in, in CONCACAF. But here in early October, the team has assembled itself once more as it prepares for a three-game, three-country window. And as the team squares up to a daunting challenge at Azteca, they will have to do so without the experience of captains Atiba Hutchinson and Milan Borjan, who are both unavailable. One, two, three. Victoria! But where the door has closed for two of John Herdman's senior men, two other players are granted the opportunity of a lifetime. The first is Steven Vittoria. The 35-year-old defender will now captain the team at Azteca. Did I think that this would be happening at a, such a, a late stage in my career, at 35 years old, living the highest point of my soccer career? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, um, you know, this was very distant, uh, but then, you know, hard work pays off, even those, those years that I wasn't part of the national team, you know, my one thing that never changed was, was the values that I tried to, to live by, you know, and, and hard work, you know, got the call back, and then it's just been a special time ever since. The second is Montreal-born keeper Maxime Crepeau a 10-year veteran of the Canada soccer program, who will now make his Octagon debut in one of the biggest games of the campaign. It doesn't get any bigger than this in terms of the importance of a game, of a football match over 90 minutes. To gain some points uh, over a campaign of uh, World Cup qualifying, so there's been a lot of work ever since I'm, I'm a kid. Uh, would I ever imagine to, uh, to be in a spot like this, to play in Azteca with, with my guys? Uh, together and go up to, against Mexico, uh, no. Uh, so now that we are here, it's to soak every moment and that's the best that um, a football player can ever ask. You can sense the country is behind this team and this team knows that we can get there, but we need every single Canadian in this country behind us to push through the journey. Is it going to be hard? Yes. Uh, we're one window down, but it, it's something that is achievable and we all believe it.
This is Estadio Azteca, one of football's grandest stages, a home to two World Cup finals. On this night, it is the next battleground on Canada's quest for Qatar. the four-hour journey across the Caribbean to Jamaica. Canada have arrived in Jamaica, 
riding a high from a strong performance at Azteca. The hosts, meanwhile, are already fighting for their World Cup lives after a disappointing start to the octagon. And as can happen when it really matters on the road in CONCACAF, a midnight fire alarm at the Canadian Hotel welcomes the team into match day. With virtually no fans in the stadium due to COVID restrictions on the island, the match in Kingston kicks off in an eerie silence. Here, two teams on opposite trajectories become locked in a heated defensive battle with few chances at either end. Well, that half of football certainly will not make its way to the Louvre. It wasn't a work of art. The chances, few and far between, Davies still on it to Jonathan David. David, Tess Blake, the ball's still loose. Big moment for Jamaica, that's a good ball, flicked on, off the post. Okay, good, down to Kubi, there's Davies. Gives it to him. Wins that race, cuts it across, all the way through, Liam Miller, stopped! Blake denies Liam Miller his first Canada goal. As the match draws to a close, Canada hold firm at the back and earn an important clean sheet. Lawrence. Fraser Capo taking no chances. It ends nil nil in Jamaica. Hey, let's have a listen in here. I know you'll feel like you've lost something here tonight. But a clean sheet there, that was a fucking warrior performance to keep that clean sheet. This point might be the biggest difference on the road, eh? We'll get our three in Panama, we'll get it at home. That's what you're doing now, next task. Look, I can't ask for any more, the effort's fucking there. Everyone's given everything. You've come to a tough place on a two-day turnaround and you've kept your clean sheet. We're gonna be back. In Toronto, 30,000, max capacity, three points, and we're off, off to the races with two more home games. So you win your next three, and we're going to be in a good spot, boys. So take pride in what you did tonight, because that's all we can ask. You're committed to your brotherhood. Congrats. For everybody at home, come on, for the fans, for the supporters, for us. Brothers on three, one, two, three. Brothers! Brothers! After a grueling journey across the continent, Canada have returned to Toronto and the fortress at BMO Field. Here, they will take on Panama in the third and final match of the window. I feel like this team has come together, you know, tremendously. From the coaching staff to the players that John brings in, I feel like everyone's on the right page, you know. Um, you felt it the first time we played at home in Toronto here, you know, you felt it with the crowd. You can feel like the crowd's really, you know, connecting with the with the men's national team, and we're really putting, you know, the world on notice that uh, we are we're not just a hockey country; we're a footballing country as well. And you know, we have great players in this country, and you know, the heart and the heart, the the fight uh, that we bring to this team, you know, the fans, you know, it's amazing. And I feel like we're really uniting together as uh, as one. And you know, to make it to the 2022 World Cup, I think uh, it will be something special for not just you know the the players or the fans, the whole the whole entire country as well. Also, give us some words, boss. This is our home. This is our fortress. We 
love to play here. It's always a special playing here, and we keep that going tomorrow. We know that this is a big game, but pressure is for big teams. We're a big team. We're a very good team. So tomorrow, we, we embrace that pressure, and we take the three points. Yes, sir. sir. Oh, oh, that was, that was, hey, tomorrow, everything that's inside us, eh? all our power, our heart, our soul gets spilled out on this field, all right? And we finish this camp in a qualifying spot, okay? I want brothers on three, nice and loud, okay? One, two, three! Brothers! Hey! Heading into the game, there is the sense of a turning tide in Toronto. Just as John Herdman asked them to do, the country's soccer fans are rallying behind this team in growing numbers as they edge closer to the dream of qualifying for the World Cup. We should be supporting our players and, and showing them that support when they come in their home stadium. It's their home. Well, we have a whole crew setting up those flags now. Uh, almost all those flags come from donations from voyagers. We put out a, a little message on the website, said for five bucks you can donate a flag, and uh, got overwhelmed with people donating one flag, five flags, ten flags, and suddenly we realized, okay, we got a job on our hands. We want that end of BMO to be absolutely flag red city. It should be crazy. It's going to be the first time we've ever done anything quite like this, so it's going to be exciting. I think people know how important this game is. They're going to be excited, and uh, the stadium's going to be deafening for the whole game. I, I just swear it. It's, it's, going to be, it's going to be hard to take. As kickoff approaches, droves of fans draped in Canada red are descending on the stadium. This will be the first sold out game of the campaign. A win here would see Canada finish the window as part of the all-important top three positions in the group. And in front of a raucous Canadian crowd, the scene is set for a breakthrough performance. But it is Panama who will silence the crowd by striking first. Here comes the overlap, Murillo, the end of Claire, he has some space in front of him. Miller trying to get back across and it's in! Panama surge down that right hand side it's Rolando Blackburn. Panama take the early lead. It's 1-0 for the visitors. After such a bright start, Canada give it all away. Canada's response to going down is rapid and relentless. And after knocking at Panama's door for much of the first half, the team is finally rewarded. They're knocking on that door. Davies, near post again. Panama appear to be succeeding in their efforts to stem the Canadian attack, until a moment of brilliance from Alfonso Davies changes the game.
you said, the waves are coming, the pressure. Tejon's there, Buchanan! This time he gets his goal! And just like that, he's getting a three, it's Panama one, and Bebo Field has come alive again! Get in Canada! Lorea to Davies. Good ball, Buchanan's there! Canada are now 12 games into their World Cup qualifying journey, and still they remain unbeaten. Guys, I'm lost for words. Listen, what a fucking honor, eh? This whole country, everybody expects this. We have another level inside of us, okay? Another camp's down, we're in a qualifying spot. But we all know that we have more to give, and we're gonna keep growing up and up, okay? Undefeated one more time, and this is only possible, you know why? Because this family deserves it, okay? And it's gonna be more and more and more, Everybody be proud of themselves, okay? And we, we keep going, we're not done. Oh, yeah. 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 I just wanna say... Yeah. No, no, I just what wanna say... I'm happy, you know, I'm happy to be here with you guys. Um, you know, I was devastated when I had to go home uh, earlier during the year. Um, but I'm here, you know, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to be with all you guys. Good three points, let's keep going in November. Yes. With only eight matches left to play, what started as a far-off dream is now edging ever closer to reality. This is a country that is starting to believe.